And that's that. <laughs> can I just say, can I just say, um, thank you, thank you for going first, Liz and John. You know, maybe, maybe you should let women go first for once. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I start the show. Nobody gets to do that. <laughs> See that? He for she, John. He for she. Oh my god! All right, guys. There's like fun banter bullying, and then there's straight out telling me I hate women. I didn't. I, John. I did not say that. I did not say that. I did not say that. You he said just read it. the break. I just. I read the room. I read the room. I read what you guys were, were going for there, uh, and I feel like I feel like you guys take it uh, and I'm going to tread waters on in this show. How are you doing, John? Good. Would you guys like a word? Yes, please. Yeah. Please. Uh, the word for today is bass fishing. Bass fishing? Is yes. it a sea bass? Yes. Cool. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Not like fishing for bass guitars or anything. <laughs> I mean, um, that inspires you. Um, I actually was looking at sea bass in Aldi today. Um, and I, um, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about the fact that we've got to queue up and get into Aldi. And um, not just Aldi, any supermarket guys. They don't discriminate. Um, but, yeah, supermarket shopping has gone kind of to a weird place now. Um, and as much as I like to think I'm pretty casual about stuff, um, I am one of those people now that if someone's next to me, I am just like, <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Get the hell out of my face. Um, but I think, I, I don't think I'm unreasonable with this now, um, that the other day, my housemates and I were doing a pizza night. We were just like, oh, let's just get pizzas of wine and, and have a good time. So I went to Aldi. Naughty Liz just went for a pizza and wine. Not a big shop, just the two things. Um, and then I was waiting at the counter, the pizza counter, and there was a couple in front of me. So I was like, I'll back off. I'll give them some space and let them do what they're going to do. And I was really proud of myself for keeping my cool. And then the guy in front of me was getting so excited about the pizzas, which I can understand, <laughs> that he was pulling out every single pizza and like, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh. And literally, like, I don't know how to describe it other than when people are looking at, well, when they used to look at VHSs and video stores and like you just pull them out and look at them all one by one. And obviously in this day and age, please don't touch every single pizza on the shelf before I'm about to go. That's all I ask. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm quite, I'm quite embarrassed to be that person now that is constantly measuring what the distance is. <laughs> but, but yeah. I, um, I have only properly went fishing once in my life. Um, it wasn't specifically for bass. I think we caught the rainbow trout, and it was off the coast of Abroth, I think. It was, I would say, maybe eight years ago. It was me, a bunch of friends, primarily from high school. Um, my friend Martin kind of organised a lot of it. Like, we basically like hired a boat and like some people to like drive us out. And I don't know what everybody's average experience in being able to like fish or like do anything in that regards but like everybody in this party had like zero experience of it so like we got to the boat and then we'd just be like hey we don't know what we're doing <laughs> and, like these grumpy like fishermen like begrudgingly like showed all of us like how to fish <laughs> like i don't know if i don't know if like that's what usually happens maybe they did usually just like oh somebody charters their boat and like they leave them to it but we were like we were out of our element. We didn't know what we were doing. So we would be frequently like leaning on them to have to be like, what are we doing now? Like we'd catch a fish and then we'd be like, okay, now what happens? And like, well, you have, you have to kill it. <laughs> and like, like I, a couple of people were like, I don't want to kill fish. It's like, yeah, but you just, you just caught the fish. You can either throw it back. That's an option or you kill it. Those are kind of your options at this. Like the fish is like bouncing around 
and you're like getting into a debate about what should be done about this fish um and then we were out there for like two or three hours it was actually very fun and then we came back everybody had caught like an average of like six to eight fish each so i think there was like less eight or ten of us let's say there was 80 fish we got there and then we were just about to like get in the car and then the guy was like you know no you guys should be like gutting those fish right and none of us had any clue what he was talking about it was like if you don't gut the fish they will like go off immediately you need to gut the fish before you get in the car <laughs> and then we were like we don't know what to do so we just like like guilty him into gutting like nearly a hundred fish for us like just being the caricature of city boys un unaware of what we're meant to be like these angry like two guys like <laughs> occasionally we're just piping up with like thanks so much for helping us like we got yeah like, these old like scottish fishermen like they helped us and then when we got back like we had to like look on youtube how to fillet a fish <laughs> We were so unprepared, despite going through every step of the process, but it was fun. I'm going to take a different approach and talk about bass guitars, because <laughs> <laughs> it was mentioned. Um, whenever I go into a music shop, um, uh, I like if I go if I go to, there's like a re really nice uh, music shop uh, music shop in London and like very close to Tottenham Court Road. I don't remember the name of it. But it's really, really nice. And you just go in there and they have like this big Yamaha um, area filled with like guitars and like uh, drum machines and whatnot. Uh, and I used to go in there and just just like check out the guitars and play a little bit. But I always used to get really worried whenever I picked up a guitar because I really wanted to play them. But I'd always forget what to play. Uh, and everything that I just, every song that I've ever played in my life just goes out the window the moment I step into this store. And then I just <laughs> I just sort of sit down and I ask the guy really nicely, is, is it okay if I plug it in? And I take a really nice sort of Fender Jaguar. And he sort of, he just stands up like next to me. <laughs> and then I get really nervous. And instead of playing something that I know, I just start picking like random individual notes. And it just sounds fucking awful. Uh, and <laughs> I pretend to know what I'm doing with the uh, with the knobs on the on the amplifier. <laughs> so, uh, so, so every time I go into a, a music store, uh, I always think that I'm gonna really enjoy or, 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 or test out a guitar, but I just end up getting more nervous, and I never end up playing it, and I never end up playing it the right way, uh, just because of the people that are in there all the time. Even when it's completely empty, I feel really nervous about it. Um, and uh, yeah, I think one musical instrument that I've always really wanted to play that I've never tried is saxophone, just because it sounds sexy. It just sounds cool. <laughs> Not because I want to be sexy, but just because it just sounds awesome. It sounds like a really cool instrument, uh, but I wouldn't know how it works. I don't. I in my mind, it's not just the act of blowing. There's something. There's something weird that happens. Do you know what I mean? Like no. there must be. There, <laughs> there must be. It surely it's not like a blowing thing. Surely there's something else, and that thing treats me. It treats me the. <laughs> <laughs> the way I could play a different musical instrument it's just interesting you know what guys this has really made me think a lot about myself <laughs> I found myself a bit in this monologue awesome so we've insulted John a little bit and now he's found himself <laughs> now we're going to do some improv I've come full circle <laughs> <laughs> Hey, dude. Good to see you. It's been a while. What up, bud? Well, I mean, exciting things are happening. I've uh, been developing this dating app. And, you know, there's loads out there, aren't there? Ones where women make the first move, other ones that give you the prompts. But I think mine's going to top them. You, you did all this in three months? I, I haven't seen you in, like, three four months' time, and you've, you've done an app? Yeah, I mean, well, awesome. they're, they're saying we've got to be really productive with this time. And sure. I just thought, what do people really want to know about a person? 
when they meet them on the dating app. All right, that, I'm I'm impressed. Like that's yeah, that's Liz. That's amazing. That's so. I've I've been doing nothing. I've just been like eating and sleeping. T- tell me about this app. Tell me about this dating app. What's so different about it? It tests how well you can play the saxophone. What, what do you, what do you, what is it like a music, you said it was a dating app, it's not a music app. Yes, a dating app. But we all know saxophone is the best way of telling out, it telling if a person is sexy or not. And that's all we ever really want to know, right? Uh, I guess. I mean, if I look at someone and they're playing the saxophone, that doesn't make me attracted to them. <laughs> like, well, we, cut to, uh, we cut to John's uh, character on a date with somebody. Whoa, I know, I know this is, I know this is uh, a little bit confrontational, but I've been tracked before, so I have brought a saxophone for you to just, just so that you can prove that you are as skilled at the saxophone as your app profile says you are. So if you could oh, like test that. <laughs> I, um, I. I've been you know, catfished I mean, before. <laughs> but but I'm, I'm but I'm sitting right here. We're we're sat. You you can see me. We've been talking for two hours. Like you you know me. Like I don't have to prove myself at the sex fair. I only did this to help my friend out. You, you, you can to... you can play sex, right? You know it's not just blowing. No, it it must be blowing. It's that's the only thing I can attribute a saxophone with. I can't believe you've been done again. Been done again. You don't even no, know. We've had a lovely time. What are you talking about? Well, we've got to know each. We have so much in common. Why don't we play a bloody saxophone? You know what? Fuck this saxophone. Fuck the saxophone. Yeah. <laughs> we, <Are> they... cut... <laughs> we cut to John in his bedroom with the saxophone, <laughs> and his mum comes in. John. What? Don't barge at knock before you come in, mum. <laughs> John, what have I told you? Am I going to have to take that thing off of you? I'm really worried you're getting into the wrong crowds. <laughs> Look, I just love Baker Street, okay? Baker Street's great. I want to I want to meet the guy that did the solo from Baker Street. Is that is that so wrong? I think society in 10 years will validate me. What am I going to tell your father? Don't. He's busy on the clarinet. Don't tell Dad anything. Just tell him that I'm like a guitar player, a cool guy. Okay, we'll keep this between you and me. Okay, okay. Go on, play something for me now. Do you want me to? Do, do you have any requests? The spy who loved me. <laughs> Don't hear it a lot, but I'll play it. <laughs> we, we, cut to, we, cut, we cut to Liz at a bar with her friend. Wait, wait, so you caught your son having sex with the sex phone and you told him to play it? I mean, some would say it's unorthodox parenting, but I got carried away in the moment and well, that's... Uh, what? It, I mean, it took me back to the days of sleep with Mac. I can't, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, okay, I don't know, Harry. I don't know what I was thinking. We cut back mm-hmm. to the son by himself in his bedroom. Oh, saxophone. I shouldn't be making love to you. You're just a piece of brass. But I can, if I can fit right in here. I've made the modifications. And the sounds you make. I know how to... Do that umbrature. Like, okay, I'm gonna use a muter. Okay, I'm gonna mute the, I'm gonna mute the front, the sound, and then mom and dad won't hear you. <laughs> Look, um, I know that. Only been here a couple of days, but I just think it's gross to milk this cow. 
I'm a city boy. Can you do it for me? It's gross. Sonny boy, let me be very clear. I put an advert in the newspaper for someone to come to my barn and milk my cows. You're going to milk them whether you like it or not, or else you ain't getting your $10.50 an hour. You hear me, boy? Look, I got two months left of this summer job. Why have, and I, why the fuck you take this job if you don't know how to do this? I should have done thought, my due diligence. I should have tested you. But I'm a simple folk. I believe people on the word. When I saw the ad for milking, I thought it was packaging up milk in a little carton. I didn't think I'd have to be the gr grossly pulling on them teats. I don't want to do that. I'm, I don't want to. You don't see me doing that in the middle of the town. Well, if you don't want to, you can fuck off. You can get another job. There's no reason for you to stay here. I just won't pay you. Is there anything else I can do? <laughs> well, we do need a janitor. It's less paid. It's nine pound an hour, but we can do it. Janitor? Isn't there like a, some accounting I can do? That's more of my expertise. I'm so close to putting a bullet hole in your belly, boy. <laughs> so close. Yeah, you city me. boys really push me. We cut to uh, uh, John Gallagher's character inside the house, um, mopping the kitchen floor. Oh, <laughs> this is gross. Oh, I don't like... <laughs> Look, ah! <laughs> sorry, I don't think I have to knock in my own house, <laughs> if you please. You just Look, scared me. My husband, because we're married, me and the farmer. I know what married means. Yeah, I, mean, I know. I'm a pretty slicker, but I am, I'm not dumb. He said that he'd hired you to clean our house, but you're doing a shitty job. <laughs> Look, it's... Go on, go on, I'm sorry. You gonna talk over me, boy? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I'm a city boy, I talk over everybody. Look, let's cut, let's cut a deal, all right? You... rob these floors. <laughs> and then take me back to the city with you. <laughs> I'm sick of these here hicks. You, oh, I did not expect that. I thought it was uh, okay. Uh, I'll mop the wait. No, hang on. Okay, okay, okay. You want me to mop these floors and then I'll take you to the city? Yeah. You you gonna be okay in there? You gonna find a job? You gonna how are you gonna survive? Are you, you're leaving your husband? What? My husband. He always keeps talking about putting putting bullets in people's heads. We cut to we cut to the farmer. He has an uh, has farmhouse. And the wife and the janitor of the spirit, but there is a, a private detective there. So, Mr. Private Detective, obviously for some reason they cleaned the house before they ran away. <laughs> I don't know, I think this person has ran, taken my wife just because they weren't happy with the pay I was giving them. So uh, just to get me uh, this right for my records, then you don't think your wife ran away uh, with the stable boy that you hired? No, so if you to... suggest that one more time, I'll put a bull in your belly, boy. Uh, <laughs> I I am going to have to ask you to stop saying that to me because oh, I'll do it. I, 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 the law can't stop me. The law the law can't stop you. I mean, I'd like to see them try. I'll just put a bullet in your belly right now. Uh, in the belly? That won't kill me instantly, you know that, right? Do you want me to find your wife and the stable boy? Or do you want me to take a bullet to the belly? I, need... I just am, I just am going to take disrespect like that. Now, obviously, my wife has been stolen by some city slicker. He's probably seduced her with speak of the big spies of the city. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. Can't yeah. you be more confident? <laughs> please, <laughs> please. I, I need a detective to have confidence in. I'm, I'm sorry. I just, I mean, I don't think I'm the right person for the job. I'm going to be quite honest. You say no to a job? This is the second person who said no to a job. <laughs> I mean, I just honestly took this on as a bit of a summer internship, and I just, I don't. <laughs> I don't think we're very uh, good at we, it. We cut to uh, John's character in the city months later at a job interview with, um, you know, just like an accounting style company. <laughs> so um, I guess I have to interview you for this job. I don't want to do that. Come on. I don't want to. Come on. Uh, it's too much work. Oh my god, I have I see, I get you. I get you. That's all I've got. I just, I understand. I get it. Hey. You wanna... What are you doing? Who are you calling? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> what is that? I'm just, I'm just going online. <laughs> I'm calling you. <laughs> I'm tired. I don't want to do. I don't want to interview people. What? Like it's a tech. It's a tech talk. But I thought I was in the middle of talking to you. Shut up. Oh, you shut up. Uh, suddenly, like a manager walks in. Uh, guys, have you are you done with this interview? No. Oh my god! I did it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, excuse me. Um, I'm trying to get to your shelves. Could you uh, move out of the way? Just for, oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, <sighs> nah, nah, not that. So, so. You just licked that... oh, Sorry, could you keep two mirrors? <laughs> <laughs> that was the halloumi I was going to buy. I wouldn't buy it now. I've but... just licked it. <laughs> so, what, what are you doing? Why do you keep licking all of the produce? I mean... I'm, test I'm testing but... I'm testing my food before I buy it. I'm actually... If you need to know, I'm on furlough right now, so I don't have a lot of money. I kind of want to buy stuff that's good. While I'm at home. But this is all this is all stuff that other people want to buy. Like I came here to do my shopping too. I just I just Can I just I appreciate Can I just say can I just say it's not a requirement to wear a mask, but you should be wearing one. You should be wearing one. <laughs> but it's like you've got your mask is actually round your chin, so I don't. You do realise that's not the point of what your mask is for either. Well, obviously, so just, I've got to take it down to taste the foods. Uh, so, I'm sorry. Are you... I'm, I'm going to call the management. I, ju I just think. Well, I was it's... about to say. I was about to say. I think this is a management guy and. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, please, madam, lower your voice, please. This, we're in a time of crisis at the moment. That's great. I've read about that. Like a loud, loud voices can uh, like spread the disease further. Yeah. If you would like to, if you would like to talk to management, you you can talk to me. And... I, uh, right. Hello, Reggie. Reggie, please. Can you just stop this gentleman? Uh, two is... meters apart, please. Two meters apart, please, madam. I, okay. You. Okay. This, this person here is licking the produce. Reggie, 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 how are you doing today? Hello, John. <laughs> I'm I, doing very well, thank you. Are you guys friends? We're I'm fucking. the king of this Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Not, Reggie... literally, not literally, but like, no, somebody's like, I'm, this, I'm the king of this town. That's kind of what I am for this Tesco. Reggie, okay. Reggie only answers to George, and George gets what George wants. Uh, so, and um, is, is this woman bothering you, George? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
she doesn't have a mask, which isn't legally required, but like it would be preferred. And it's not. And if I, if actually, if you could let me speak just for a second, like I feel like I'm being interrupted quite a lot. Um, uh, I was trying to get to the produce, and she was just standing there, like just getting in the way. And then I tried to, I tried some of the limit, decided mm, I don't want this one. And now she's making some kind of big fuss about the fact that I'm taking big chunks out of it. See, um, see, madam, the way this works is that uh, uh, our previous king, uh, King Reginald... Ah, uh, uh, my father. He, he unfortunately died um, at a javelin, little javelin accident, and uh, George stepped forward, and he has become from prince to king. It's tradition that he would rule this land. And if you stand in his way, then his servants will have to escort you out. What of the? Where, where did all these people come from? That's right. When I said it wasn't literal, I lied. It was literal. I am the king of Tesco. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> Mm. Indeed, your silence speaks volumes. Sad, sad in many ways. Ages of our kingdom. Okay. The three, the th three tasks, if you will. The three tasks to enter Tesco's. Okay. Hmm. You must find the white stag, and bring us bring up his heart. Okay. I mean, I just want my weekly shop. Can I just get my weekly shop and I'll just, I'll be gone. I mean, let him lick the stuff. Just let me get the weekly shop. Is that okay? I don't know, madam. He's licked a lot of the stuff. Oh, God. Where's the stag? Well, will I find the stag? <laughs> stag stag's out of five, isn't it, Reggie? Stag's out of five. Okay. And we cut to aisle five. Ooh, it's an outsider. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away uh, from uh, our stag! Stay away from our stag! We found I, it! I just need I just need something from the stag for uh, I I Wait I'll a second real quick. Wait a second. You look like, you look like the hero that the mage said would come once. The one to topple the king. I, yeah, brilliant. Can Please I Please maintain I... maintain two meters? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little bit close. <laughs> <laughs> Um, nurse, can I have the scalpel? Of course. And can I have um, um, the stitching kit as well, please? Yep. Um, nurse, when is a good time to let someone know that I don't know how to do this open heart surgery. Do, are you able to do this for me? Can just... D do doctor, he's opened up. You've got his heart in your hands. You, I, this I just, is like a... Is this a prank just because I'm kind of new to the hospital? Okay, guys, you got me. <laughs> I was just no. kind of working it out as I went along. You, you personally anesthetised him? You said, no, 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 I'll do it. Yeah, I mean, they say confidence is key, so fake it till you make it. I just kind of grabbed what I thought looked like the right thing. <laughs> okay, okay, uh, uh, okay. Uh, if that's true, uh, don't worry. I'll go and get, like, another real, a real heart surgeon and... But I, I, Are I, you kidding I, I, me? You don't know how to do this? I honestly, I've literally... I mean, I, I, know, I... I know how to nurse. I, that's good for me. I just kind of blagged it my whole life and I kept getting ahead. No one ever checks. No, they, they I, don't. They don't, but I, I do the checks because I know what I'm talking about. By the way, I, I was just testing you when I gave you that fork. I knew that wasn't a scalpel. I was testing you. Can, can, can I... How do we get this sorted? 
Uh, I just want to let you both know that I'm really happy that you're saving my daddy's life, and God bless your souls. I'm... Bye. We, we no, 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 come back, come back, come back. <laughs> what? Um, I, I know how to set up for um, the family. Uh, that's a job that the nurse has to do. Uh, we have a child seat right over here for you to watch everything going on. Is, is it okay if I just wait in in the waiting room? Do I have to be here? You can wait in the waiting room if you want. Do you Why not do you want have... to see your daddy wave at you? Let, oh, look please, at please, please put his arm down. But look! <laughs> He's waving at his little girl. He's uh, happy to see you. His eyes are... His eyes aren't open. That's fine. Saying? That's fine. He's not dead. What, why do you have a child's seat? That's, in here? that's for you. For me? Yeah. <laughs> to okay. watch. Okay. I, I guess... I guess I'll... I'll Okay, I'll sit up. Okay. There you I'll, go. I'll, Take I'll it. There you go. Oh, there's a, there's a cup holder for juice. Can I... Stop, can I, stop, stop, stop. I'll be honest. I I don't know how to nurse. I've been buying oh. it. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank goodness, it's not just... I mean, just... I was going to, I was going to lie, but now there's a kid. <laughs> I mean, but... I, I can't I, lie I, to a kid. The innocence of a child. Oh, it's real easy. Honestly, just pretend they're an adult, and then you can, and then it feels fine lying to them. Honestly, that's what I do. I'm not comfortable pretending a child is an adult. That has such <laughs> consequences. I am not cool with. Okay, maybe you want to do that, Mister, but that's not what I meant to. Uh, not, not in every way. I assure you. Um, okay, well, you just seems to give a philosophy and imply that was your whole thing. <laughs> Look, I think we're getting a little off track here about the child. I think you need to t take their attention away from it so I can work out just how to stitch this dude up. But do, do I need to do something with this heart? Like, okay, what, okay, what... Wait, okay. I'm taking mind, control. I'm taking control of the situation. Oh. Um, clear. <laughs> yeah, my daddy's going to live. No, this, I got the heart in my hand. You've got to... Those, uh, no, don't do anything to the body. Uh, okay, I'll, 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 I know I'll that. Shock. You hold the heart and I'll okay. shock it. <laughs> Time of still being alive. Yay. 9.27. Hey, kid. Dad can survive with half of heart, right? We cut to um, we got to the kids um, and the offices of uh, the legal department of the hospital. Okay, kids, look, <laughs> you got us banged to rights. We we fucked up. You, I'm not gonna lie, we fucked the pooch on this one. You, oh, you, I don't like that. I don't like that word. No, I mean that's my whole philosophy. On this. <laughs> Either you fuck the pooch or you don't fuck the pooch. We fuck the pooch on this one, kids. We, we've we done you. We've done you dirty. Okay? Oh, We're sorry. No. We're sorry. You know, what What do you want? Just to keep this on the hush hush. So dad, dad's gone? He's maybe, maybe he's gone. You, your dad's dead and your mom's dead. <laughs> and my mom, she was in the waiting room. Yeah, well, the waiting room staff didn't know what they were doing either. So they put her in to shred her. Do you know what you're doing? Buddy, I'm the only person who knows what I'm doing here. I'm a lawyer. Here, have a scotch. Have a scotch, kids. No, I, I'm, I'm too young to have a scotch. I don't want a scotch. Stop. I'm not, I'm not, I'm a kid. But, you know, to be fair, to be fair, your philosophy has hardened my, my, my intuitions. My, you know, I, I feel, a, I feel a little bit more mature and, I guess I can... You are processing your mother's death so well. Yeah. I remember yeah. I remember when my mom died, I cried for three days straight. <laughs> you, saw... are, you are over it so quickly. Um, we, we, we cut to uh, the child at his parents' funeral, double funeral, uh, for both parents together. 
and we are gathered here today to say goodbye to Jeffrey and Helen there's Palmer. A, in the background, there's a grave digger like chopping a tree. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to add, to say the eulogy today for these two wonderful people is their five-year-old son. Jason, would you like to stand up? Thank you, Pops. Here, yeah. have a caramel swirl on me. <laughs> kind, kind boy. Uh, hey, everybody. This was, uh, I guess, I guess we all saw this coming, you know? You you win some, you lose some. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, I'm kind of late for my meeting, so uh, God bless. Take care. I'll see you all on. Uh, I'll see you all on the barbecue on Friday. Thanks a lot, everybody. Oh, okay, um, boys, back up the <laughs> cement truck. A cement truck <laughs> starts dropping cement on the coffin. That's what that's what we do. Edit. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. That was good. Yeah. Thank you, Liz Kelly, for being our guest. Mm. Thank you for having Thanks. me. Liz, well, do you have anything you would like to pluck to the audience, to the enraptured <laughs> audience? Ooh. Um, no. <laughs> uh, <Yeah. the> <laughs> um, BLC, Bristol Long Form Comedy, and all things improv on um, online. Um, yeah, that's all. But, and yeah, that, I really, <laughs> I, I honestly have nothing to plug. So that's a pretty cool. big plug. All improv online. That's a, big, that's a huge plug right there. Go hard or go home. That's what they say. So <laughs> yeah. almost nothing you didn't plug there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, what, 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 hang on. What what was the thing that I didn't plug? Non-improv stuff. <laughs> I, I, pl I plugged that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> Online and offline? Yeah. Everything okay. everywhere. I think that's everything. Okay. <laughs> what about yourself, Galka? Um, it might be just uh, a re repetition of some of the things that Les just said. <laughs> oh, I won't. I oh, no. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. I've learned from my mistakes, and instead, I will. I'll not overshadow Liz any further. I will say, Boat Club. Boat Club is an improv show that happens every Monday on YouTube. Search Boat Club. Uh, it's three guys. Three <laughs> three guys doing improv. Uh, obviously, uh, but it's real fun. That's it. Awesome. What about you, McKinnis? Um, I do a show every Tuesday uh, over at Couch Improv. Which is a soundtrack show. You get a spell five playlist and the songs off that. It's very fun. And of course, this. Come back next week and come back at half eight, where we'll be talking to Liz about how she does improv. Are you prepared for that? Are you prepared for that, Liz? The, uh, they, they better be prepared for it, I'll oh. tell you that, all right? <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much for coming, and we'll see you later.